Peter and I just want to thank all of you for the opportunity that we have been presented with to run this franchise going forward. It is an honor and a privilege. If you look up there, that is a very lonely flag. We want another one. A masterpiece is considered an artist's greatest work. Play three. Have you ever seen anything like it? A creation that has exceeded all levels of quality. Three, three at the buzzer. Oh my goodness! A work of art holding its own beauty, chaos, and soul. The Golden State Warriors have won the NBA title. For the Golden State Warriors, last year's championship was their masterpiece. Every shot, to step in the corner, every block, every drop of sweat and blood accounted for, like the last strokes on a painting. As the Warriors stand in front of a fresh, blank canvas, the question is, how do you do it again? How do you outperform the obstacles, the critics, and the pressure? How do you move forward and surpass yesterday's accomplishment? How do you create another masterpiece? This is Warrior's Ground, the hero's journey. All of the games are going to be tough, and the tougher the games are, the more you are prepared to deal with situations, because all that happens is the importance of the game changes. The game doesn't change, you still play the game. So if you're being challenged all the time, you're going to have a better chance to meet that challenge come playoff time. Jeez, finally, I get this and maybe eat. Sally, where's my man? Let's get a picture. Uh, this is my man. What a tall fellow. Look, at, look how short I look next to him, huh? <laughs> Chef Salvatore de Grande has been an institution in the San Francisco restaurant scene for decades. I've been making this dish for 60 years. His unique cooking style has many fans, including Rick Barrett, a warrior legend who was an integral part of the 1975 NBA championship team. Somehow Rick discovered Sal in his rookie year and they just established a bond. And so, you know, he loved Sal's food. I've known you longer than any of those guys. I mean, I'm not even in the story. I've known him since 1965. I don't get here that often, but when I can, I always try to come by and stop by and see Sal. And the Warriors were nice enough to invite me back to be part of the ceremony tonight for the rings. And yeah, here we go. All right. Thank you. Bon appetito. Bon appetito, yes. To now have, you know, something, I mean, there's my little old beat up old ring right there, but for them, I would hope that this is something they're going to re wear and be extremely proud of the accomplishment that they have. I'm hoping these guys understand and, and appreciate that and realize what an opportunity they have because they still have all of their people back and some other people they've added. They have a chance to do something very few teams have ever done, which is to be repeat champions. No one has a better appreciation for what's at stake than journeyman guard Sean Livingston. It was just eight years ago that Sean was unsure if he would ever ride a bike again, let alone walk on both feet. A freak injury to his left knee resulted in a torn ACL, MCL, and PCL. In addition, Sean's knee was dislocated and doctors feared they would be forced to amputate his leg. Well, the injury happened. It was obviously painful, probably the worst pain that I've ever felt. The doctor came out, you know, put my knee back into place, and he was basically disjointed and dislocated. It was, it was, it was shattering, you know, it was kind of like earth shattering, uh, I would say, just because I didn't know what to expect. and just kind of like being in the dark. For the former first round pick, Livingston's promising career was in jeopardy. Rehab was hard because it was just every day and there was so many plat plateaus. Step forward, two steps back. You know, two steps forward, step back. And it was like that for probably about three years. For him to come back to you know, the way that he wanted to be and play, you know, and be successful in the NBA, it was kind of hard. So he was 
always in a different team, you know, trying to get his role in the team, and uh, that never happened. Being in and out of uh, the NBA, uh, being cut, waved, and at 18, 19, I was kind of a cornerstone of a franchise, you know, so my role had changed significantly. And, you know, that was hard. It was kind of a bruise to my ego, but, you know, it was more so of getting over that and, you know, manning up and just being, you know, looking at the reality of the situation that I was blessed. I was able to keep my leg. I was able to, you know, play basketball again. And then from there, I'm able to have a shot you know, to, to live out my dream still in the NBA. Livingston bounced around the NBA and the Development League, playing for eight teams over the course of seven seasons. Maintaining a strong mentality was vital for Sean as he struggled to stay in the league. He would eventually find a home with the Golden State Warriors. Came here to Oakland and we couldn't be more thankful to have him. You know, he's a great leader in the locker room as well. The guy really doesn't care about his numbers and just wants to win and he embodies everything you know this team's about. To be even under his, his wing almost uh, coming in in training camp and kind of learning from him because he's been around for a long time has been good for me and um, I'm pretty sure that he influenced a lot of other guys on the team as well. His journey's really unique and it's such a cool story. It's, a, it's really inspiring for everyone who plays this game. I think the injury is physical but the majority of it with athletes is mental because you have to come back kind of the same level uh, mentally as far as not holding back, as far as, you know, um, putting yourself out there, exposing your body. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to play in fear. From there, I made that decision that, you know, it was going to be all or nothing. Right here, this is actually the parade stage was set up, the actual parade rally. Um, and I mean, that was, that was one of the best moments probably in my life. Seeing a million people out here um, supporting us, you know, going crazy. What are you looking forward to most about opening night coming up? The rings. I, the opening night, what I look forward to the most are the rings. And then also to raising that banner and then standing there with all my brothers, you know, and what we accomplished, seeing that, you know, that accomplishment going up into the rafters. I mean, that's there forever. After winning the championship, the Warriors formed a ring committee that was headed up by Assistant General Manager Kirk Lacob. Their goal was to help design the perfect ring for both the players and the organization. Over about two and a half weeks span, I had to meet with seven different companies and kind of vet out the, uh, the first couple stages. Um, eventually, the committee settled on Jason of Beverly Hills, and then it was my task to speak with the players and other, other kind of key members in the organization about what should go into this ring. In terms of jewelry, you can really do just about anything. It's just a matter of making the perfect design that really matches the identity of the team. One of the first things that we started with when working with the Warriors was what are the shapes, what are the ideas, what are the storylines we're going to incorporate with the ring. We really wanted to encapsulate everything that made the Warriors the Warriors. So once we finalize what we want in a two-dimensional drawing, we move that into a 3D or CAD drawing. This file will actually be the production file used for making and assembling the final championship ring. The next step from using the 3D CAD is to actually prototype and print this design in wax. We then move on into the casting process. This process entails creating a cylinder or flask which will then be cooked overnight and create a mold which we'll pour the gold into. One of the most important steps in this process is setting the diamonds. This is very, very meticulous work and so each stone has to have the gold set on top of it and pushed over so it's held in and fastened to the piece. When you look down on top of the ring, you're really looking at the Golden State Warriors logo. We decided to put this particular part of the ring in 67% gold. 
to signify the 67 regular season wins. We have 16 princess cut stones in there to represent the 16 playoff wins. We had 240 total stones on the top to symbolize how many wins the organization had on the current ownership group before they won. Another aspect that we decided to incorporate was the actual architecture of Oracle Arena. This can be seen on the outside of the ring as well as on the inside of the ring. We got blue sapphires in there because we wanted to keep the theme, get the colors in there. A lot of rings are, are all bling. We love our colors. Blue and yellow is powerful, so we wanted to make sure to include those. The franchise has actually won four total championships in the history. We actually picked four single stones within the ring. And under black light, you can actually see these stones glow. We wanted to bring something new and something fresh to the ring design industry and championship industry as a whole, and I think with this particular ring, we really accomplished that. I think we ended up with something really cool and special and tells a great story, building something that I think these guys are going to cherish for the rest of their lives. Right now I'm putting gloves on so I don't leave any marks or fingerprints on each and every piece. I'm going to carefully take out every piece and put them into our traveling case here. The championship rings contain an immense amount of symbolism. As they traveled north for the home opener, the night would be a celebration for both players and fans alike, while at the same time bringing closure to a feat many believed unobtainable. The fact that the Warriors won an NBA championship growing up here is, is almost inconceivable to, in nature to believe that that's possible. I think the Warriors fan, certainly I did, always felt like that was something other teams do. Other NBA teams win championships, we don't. So it's very hard for me to separate myself and the role I am in now from, from how I would feel as a fan. Um, and it'll be a moment to reflect upon where this organization was for many, many years and where it stands now. And uh, it's a good, it's a really good feeling. And I'm, I'm, uh, it's an overwhelming feeling. To look up and look at that 2014, 15 and say, I was, I was part of that deal. It's, uh, it's one of those forever things. And there's not a lot of those. For Dub Nation, this opening night would help erase the idea that the Warriors could never be a championship team. The ceremony would not only close the book on last season, but it would bring finality to 40 years of waiting. It feels like I never ever would have thought it, just that it would ever happen. I never thought it would ever happen. It's been a long time. I've been a Warriors fan since uh, I moved to California when I was like five years old. It's gonna be a lot of excitement in the crowd and everything. Everyone's gonna be hyped 40 years, you know, finally get that ring, bring it back. Just joy feeling a lot of joy right now for the Warriors. I can only imagine how it feels to be on opening night, especially with uh, the unveiling of the uh, championship banner. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Opening night, I think the ring ceremony is going to be very special. You know, this city, 40 years without winning a championship, and the, the guys that put in all that work and effort to, to make it happen, to, to get that one last celebration before we uh, start going after it again for the upcoming season is what I'm looking forward to. Uh, when you do win a title, you have to celebrate it. You have to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, you honor it. And I think ring night is all about you know, honoring the previous season, hanging that banner that's gonna be there forever, and moving on. We won the championship. We got the trophy, we celebrated. But we, we didn't get the ring. We didn't get, get that kind of finality to this long season. So it's kind of like the season's been going on still in the summer, it's the off season, all that, but we still, it's still that championship experience. We kind of want to finally just solidify it in history, hang that banner up in Oracle. Opening night, I'm looking forward to uh, obviously getting our rings, but you know, that I think that's gonna make it more real. Getting our rings, uh, that's, this is gonna be an exciting moment for us. The most exciting thing about opening night will be the closure to it. One, two, and three. All right.
right, it's game time, start of defending the championship season right now. It's just gonna be awesome. I can't wait to see the new rings. You know something? I honestly, truthfully, think about our journey from the time we started. That's actually you what I think I about all the time. alone. But nobody thought we had a chance. How about that? But that's what it's about. I know. But honestly, what I think about is all of us. Moments during over the last five years, all the things we had to do, and I remember all that. What it took to get here, not me. And all that work and a little luck, too. You always have that work. Yes. But I don't know how much luck it really was. It was destiny. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily believe in fate. I, I believe that if you work hard and put yourself in a position to take advantage of opportunity, it'll eventually pay off. I think you create essentially then your own fate. Um, people talk about lucky all the time, and it's the same thing to me. People are gonna get lucky in their life. There may be bigger opportunities of luck than others. I certainly um, am a product of luck, but I think if you're not ready to take advantage of those opportunities, you're gonna waste them and then you might look at fate the wrong way. Is it fate that the Warriors won the championship? If you choose to look at it way, sure. I look at it as we earned it um, and we made our own fate. It's, on, it's almost time, so we're gonna put them out. Steph Curry, check. Draymond Green, check. Andrew Bogut, Barbosa, check. Michelle Laker, Peter Goober, Rick Waltz. We're good? We're good. Right. A great scene here at Oracle Arena. The lights are out, glow sticks all throughout the crowd. Everybody's standing up. Time now for the ring ceremony. Great thrill for me, great thrill for me. Great thrill for me. That is great. That's real. I'm happy I'm giving this to you, man. I really am. There it is. There it is, baby. Thank you. Man, thank you. Excited for you, man. Really, yeah. Congratulations. You're very welcome, man. You're a big part of it. Big part. Real proud of everybody I went to, you know, battle with last year. It was cool being last. I got to see everyone how excited we were to get their rings. It was a great honor. Fantastic, man. Congratulations. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Joe. Who would have thought? Hey, I would have thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shoot, you're on top of the world at that moment, you know, of the basketball world. So it's uh, when you see that ring, you want to get another one because it's such an amazing feeling, you know, having a whole city, whole state behind you, and and it was um, it was real special for all of us. This is an unbelievable night uh, for all the only us players, for everybody in the organization, coaching staff, front office, Joe, Peter, but also for Dub Nation. You guys support us every single night, every single year. And we would not have been able to do what we did last year without you guys' support every single night. 39-2 at home, 67 wins in the regular season, and to cap it off with that trophy right there is a huge accomplishment, so thank you. We want to recognize David Lee, Onion Kuzmich, and Justin Holiday who are here, who helped us get to this moment. And, and finally, we always talked about it. There was a lonely banner up there. Joe Peter, you talked about it five years ago. So without further ado, I want my teammates, coaching staff to join me. Gather around. Peter, Joe, come on over. And we're going to unveil that championship banner like we're supposed to. You know, seeing Commissioner Adam Silver and, you know, our Peter and Joe, you know, and everyone getting their rings, it hit me. To be able to share that moment with my teammates, you know, and the fans and our families, and you know, the parade was great. All that stuff was phenomenal. But just, I guess that last moment was just like the icing on the cake. The Warriors have seemed to pick up exactly where they left off last season. And while the future seems bright, the question remains, will they be able to put the past behind them and focus on becoming what some see as a pinnacle organization. Now they've won a championship. These young guys won't be saddled with that. They don't have to go through their whole career 
trying to win a championship. Now you see, does that competitiveness stay? Do you want to win two? Do you want to defend your title? I think they have an opportunity to be a dynasty, and I think that's what they want. I think that's sometimes where the fuel comes in, where somebody looks at it and says, you know, if Kyrie, you know, if Kevin Luck, and that's all a team needs is to say, look, stop doubting us. Here's what we did. We got the, we got the ring. We got the trophy. Give us our due. And I think that's part of the fuel that goes into the Warrior season. People now load their team to beat you. Uh, and San Antonio has done it. You know, obviously the Clippers have done it. So now when people specialize to bring in people to actually just beat you, whew, that's the challenge. They play straight up. They, they didn't double not one big man. They didn't double Davis. They didn't double Zach. And they played small ball, and I was very impressed. And they won the whole thing. I heard Shaq say years ago that when he won a ring, he gave it to his dad to put away. And, you know, I won a ring in high school, I put it away. College, I get to Michigan State, and I won a Big Ten championship. I put the ring away. Final Four, I put the ring away. But it's really just about not being complacent. You know, that's good. It's great to have that. You know you got that, and I'll put it away and go get another one. What's next for the Warriors? That's, that's a great question. Hopefully more, more of the same. I believe it was Vince Lombardi who said, you may not achieve perfection, but if you chase it, you'll achieve greatness. And that's what we're going for. Most importantly, then, getting better, we have to want to get better. You know, because if you don't want to get better, you'll stop improving. And I don't think that's the, I know that's not the mindset of this team, which is very important. This team wants more. And when you want more, I think that's a recipe for success because you're going to work and get it. You got a picture. Can you get a picture of this? Oh, wow. That one. Just a little different. The journey, you know, reflecting back on the journey, how hard it was, the struggle, you know, it just makes it so much more worth it. You know, I mean, I, in, in all of the sense of the word, it's, you know, I felt like I earned this.